Ready? Yep. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gus and Eddie podcast. Uh, What's it's a up? Little... What's going on? It's dude. We're in different rooms. You can't just cut me off because then Tony has to cut to a different room. So just can you let me do the intro? What's up? You you can hear me in your headphones. Don't are you trying to hear me from downstairs? Yeah, it just feels so much more natural when I actually hear your voice like coming from the real world instead of a, through the audio headphones like this. It's so fake. But you won't be able to hear me through the anything but the headphones. I can't yell that loud. It's it's four Yo, floors. What's up? I'm not hearing you. You're not. Do you, are your headphones muted? What? No, I can hear you really well through the headphones. I just want again. I want that real natural aesthetic for the for the whole. It's podcast. not gonna work, dude. We have to do this remote. It's do a quarantine you, episode. If you car, do you ever see the uh, little rascals? Yeah. You know how they made the tin can thing with the wire going between? Yeah, I feel like that's pretty common aside from the little rascals. Do you think that we could kind of just fish that up through one of the windows? And <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tries to open their window and it like pulls the cord and the can falls down. <laughs> All right, guys, this is weird circumstances. We're doing a remote yeah. Gus Nettie podcast. Gus is a few floors above me uh, in Sabrina's apartment and we're quarantining. So this is fucking weird. Are you looking? So we're looking at the camera when we talk to each other, right? I mean, I guess I'll glance at it sometimes. I'm kind of just <laughs> flitting so around. So no is what you're saying. <laughs> Listen, if it happens, it happens. Don't box me in creatively. You know how, what I'm saying? How fucking bizarre would it be if we recorded it at the angles like we normally look at each other, but yeah, different that, apartments? <laughs> that would be very strange. Yeah. Oh um, man, that'd be wacky. That'd be so that, wacky. Anyway, that's us though. That's our. Oh shit! You got one of those? I got a brew. Look at this jackass digging into a stash of non-perishable items before the shit really goes down. I got Oof. a brew, buddy. Sorry. All right. Don't talk. Well, don't I, t- hey, man. Don't talk to me. T- uh, hey, um, don't talk to me. Go ahead. L- listen, man. If it ain't coming through the cans, I don't give a crap. Okay. So you can <laughs> say anything right now. Um, well, I think we got to start off with a little bit of. You ready for the business? You ready? Do business. Okay. Yeah. Business. 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 business, business. That sounded in sync for me, but it probably wasn't. No, I don't think it was. (laughs) Um, I think I got to. I'm going to give a little blowdown on our situation up here right now. Uh, so if you guys have seen, uh, I think Sabrina put something on Instagram and then might have jumped into my subreddit, like not the Gus and Eddie one, but just the Gus Johnson one. Um. Here's the current situation. Again, we are very fortunate in in a number of ways. Um, Most of all, that a couple of weeks, like it was like literally two weeks before the shit really went down in in Los Angeles, Sabrina got approved for a different apartment. Uh, She and I already do so much work together that uh, we were looking to get something close by. We found another apartment in the same building that Eddie and I already live in. So we are approved, We're we're a few floors up. Anyway, it was about a week ago, and Sabrina had been having uh, some kind of chest pains and wasn't coughing, no fever or anything, but was definitely having some trouble breathing, and it was really painful. So she went into the doctor, and uh, again, we're in a major city, and there's a huge shortage of testing kits. So we were told, or she was told, rather, uh, by the doctor, based on all the blood tests and the breathing work that they did, like, they said, we can't test you for sure, but based on everything that you tell us, you most likely have the coronavirus. So she was like, fuck. So she called me, told me that. Uh, I went upstairs, and which means most likely I would have it then too, just because we spend so much time together. But just in the in the in the spirit of being extra safe, Sabrina and I are just full self quarantining up in the second apartment, and Eddie is downstairs in the old one. Uh, Eddie was kind enough to bring some of the uh, podcast gear out into the hallway. I, I covered my face and I picked it up. So this is the current setup right now, and that's why we're apart. So uh, have you guys? Because that was like a week ago now. Have you guys had any yeah. other symptoms since? The nice thing is, like, I mean, we were feeling really strange breathing-wise for a couple of days, but honestly, we've been largely asymptomatic, which has just been an absolute fucking gift because I'm looking at some of the accounts of other people having this shit, and it looks miserable. So, Mm. again, we don't know for sure. It's totally possible that we might not have it, but the doctor said that we most likely Might as well be careful, yeah. Might as well be careful. We're up here. But we're still feeling pretty healthy right now, so I'm lucky there. Hell yeah. Um, Well, here's... I don't know. How long are... (laughs) We don't know how long we're even going to be doing these. I feel like what we figured out and even seeing our angles, this works for the podcast like pretty well. Um, yeah, it's pretty hot. 
for now. But like, how how long? I don't know. How long are we no supposed idea. to do any of this? I don't know, dude. I really have no idea. Um, and, and the nice thing is, again, thank you viewers at home and stuff too. Like just for being appreciative through all this shit. Like everybody has to make sacrifices. This is... I, I don't even feel like, you know, like, oh, boo-hoo us, we have to do this. It's a small setback and a challenge. Like, but thank you guys for being cool with, like, the new format and stuff. Yeah. Um, also, it's like, I, I just was honestly missing the podcast, too. I'm glad we got found a way to do it because I wouldn't, I would suck to not do it at all. And we got to be in touch with our boys. We got to, we got to be checking on the homies on the home front. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And also, wait, so it was confirmed when you did talk to the doctor that uh, somebody had guessed in the comments for it, that you uh, having the Uncrustable that touched the table is what gave you both the coronavirus, <laughs> correct? Listen, I, that was a, that was the husk of the Uncrustable. Uh, those are naturally uh, antibacterial. So did so you I, peel the husk off it before you ate the jelly and peanut butter the, in the middle? The husk is like a brass doorknob. It naturally disinfects every <laughs> few seconds. So it was clean when it entered my palate, okay? <laughs> okay, got These it. These are the rules. You know, bread never soaks up anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's husk. It's a different genus. It's a different species, arguably. So I am safe there. That was not from the Encrustable. <laughs> I'm talking too close to my mic. I can see it peaking. That's my bad if that was happening, fellers. Um, do you want to just honestly start into some preguntas? I We haven't heard from our boys in like a week and a half, and I got to oh, hear yeah. them. I got to hear your voices. Let me, let, me, let me look here on my phone. I'm holding the raptor um, knife. You're Are right. you really? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Hey, I took the gold, the golden eye knife before I left. Ka ciao. Do you have any mail? Uh, I have a bunch of. Uh, I mean, earlier I picked up some uh, uh, like AT and T ads, so I could <laughs> thumb, thumb, thumb through a couple of those if you want to see what deals are out right oh, now. Oh, uh, also I have one of your Amazon packages. I accidentally brought it in. Uh, I don't oh, know what great. it is because I'm I'm not a snoop. I'm not it gonna go a, snooping in. You can be a little Snoop Dogg there if you need to be. It's it is a silverware set because we have uh, a single fork and and a small uh, box of plastic spoons that we've been using up here. So got it. So we're we're gonna be all set now, <laughs> rolling what? big with our new silverware. <laughs> um, also the the stuff. This is <laughs> I don't even care. It's like for just so people know for us. Yeah, it's been weird because it's just like you had to pretty much in a couple of like in a half hour just to like get everything that we've been prepping for and bring it upstairs, which was yeah, pretty dude. nuts. Um, the stuff you asked for also, I got gathered here if you want to uh, grab it later. Okay. Awesome. That would be super cool. Yeah. It was just fucking weird. Cause it's like, I was upstairs and then it's like, and then I called down there and then it really was like, uh, again, you know, it, it seemed very dramatic when you're in the moment, but I was just like, Oh my God. Like I, I had to like cover up my face and I put on gloves and I had to come into the apartment and try to, like, I was trying to breathe as little as possible. Cause I was like, I don't want to like give it to you, you know, mm. if I'm coming through and, and Eddie was just like, just in his room. And I just went through and I got a bunch of clothes and shit. The thing that sucks up here though, is this, this unit does not have a washer and a dryer. So oh. Like I'm set for a while on clothes stuff still, but there's going to be a point in time where I'm going to need some more clothing things. So we'll how, to... how it's like the same model apartment though, isn't it? How does it not have yeah. a washer dryer? I don't know. We have like two extra small closets, but there's no washer dryer. So that oh. sucks, but oh well, we'll figure okay. that out. Um, all right. You want to hit up some preguntas? Let's look at some preguntas. Uh, again, follow us on Twitter at Eddie Burback and at Gus Buckets in these trying times. Um, so at here, we got we got a, a boy named Loga Bag Bagababa said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Do you think that colleges should absolve students of this semester? I didn't sign up for online classes because I personally knew they wouldn't work out for me, so I don't think it should be held against me if I do poorly in an online setting. Dude, I don't know. If any of the questions know. are how to solve anything during this, bro, don't ask me. I, we'll I don't field know. this one. We'll field this one. <laughs> huh. How should we decide how worthwhile uh, online education is? Let's get into <laughs> <laughs> Me and you, who have pretty much convinced people to drop out of whatever school they're in, <laughs> even if it's like middle school. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'll say when I had my online classes, I cheated a bit. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I just, I don't, I don't envy a lot of people and a lot of industries right now, but especially the education industry as they have to try to like transport all of their curriculum to an online set. Right. No, no, I was, uh, we'll, we'll keep it in. We'll keep it. In. <laughs> right, I said something I wasn't supposed to. 
Um, it was only, it was just revealing personal information. I didn't say something that I was like societally is I'm not supposed to, yeah. um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay. You want to hit another question? I'm sorry to that person, but I just don't have an I have answer no clue. for I, you. I don't know, dude. I know Sven's in college right now. His shit just got canned the rest of the semester. Uh, it's just, it's a weird situation. I just wonder what people are gonna do for housing and food stuff. But anyway, we talk about Uncrustables on this podcast. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep focused. Oh, also, I want to ask a question then. So uh, was Thor a senior in high school? Dude, Thor was a senior in high school. He's, and he's, so he, he's missing sorry. his senior year and his senior season of baseball, which my dad is the head baseball coach, and this Dude. is his last son to go through the program. So my dad and Thor missed this perfect bonding opportunity for the last time in their lives. What it made fuck? me so sad because I saw Thor post it to Instagram and I was just uh, follow Thor on Instagram. What's Thor's username? It's Sorry, like Thor Johnson. I think it's Thor Johnson 18. Let me, let me scope it out. But yeah, Thor posted about like senior year was fun. And I was just like, Oh buddy, I don't yeah. want to hear that at all. You remember uh, three 19. weeks ago when we were just planning a double dash tournament and now it's like we can't even plan it because I don't yeah. know when. Oh, yeah, that's so true. Man. But, it's um, just weird how shit changed so quickly too. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't fucking know. Um, here's a here's a, a lighter question but around corona shit. At Carlos de Gardner says, how are you two handling the social distancing and what are you doing to pass the time? Um, I would say mainly, Gus, in the last three days. Fucking Animal Crossing, dude. Ooh, yeah, Animal baby, Crossing, dude. dude, Animal Crossing started up and just the pure nostalgia, but also seeing it on a TV in good graphics. I wanted to tear mm-hmm. up, baby. Oh, dude, it's so much fun. I've I've just been I've just been collecting shit. That's my favorite part of it is I don't really expand the island out too much. I just got like I love fishing more than anything. So Yeah, fishing is why I've always played Animal Crossing. Fish, it's good shit. Dude, I caught an oarfish. You get one of those yet? Yeah, bro. I got a first day, day one, bro. Fuck you. I thought I was special, dude. I was so <laughs> stoked when that baby came up. Um what uh, I still like from even my childhood. The amount of like dopamine that's entered my brain for catching red snappers is like so big because they're three thousand bells. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, every t- and they're common. They're a common also uh, fish that will sell for a lot. Pretty crazy, outrageous. I guess. Outrageous, outrageous, dude. I guess life comes at you fast. That's kind of what I'm saying. That's hardball, baby. Yo, what kind of villagers you got in your town right now? You got you got good I got, ones. I got a um, a French frog named Cousteau. Um, okay. and a bear named Tammy that I believe was in uh, <laughs> new leaf that I, I also, she's kind of mean. <laughs> um, so like, yeah. I, have you had it where like, I think cause there's so little villagers right now, they'll just be like, Hey, you've been talking to me a lot today. Uh, yeah, it's like, bitch, give me there's some three space. people on the Island. What are you fucking am I supposed it's to like, do? Dude, not only are we on a deserted Island in the game, but I'm lonely in real life. And you're telling me that like, we should just like, I should fuck off. Like what Tammy straight up has, listen, Tammy's a bitch. She's a cold, hard bitch. Like we'll say it. <laughs> Tammy will be like, Oh, maybe we need a bigger Island. It's like, what the fuck, man? So, uh, okay, Tammy, that. go un erode some of the shoreline. Then you dipshit. Okay. God damn. I'm like, Tammy, why didn't you give me the fucking river jumping pole right away mm-hmm. then? I'm trapped in this little area. Um, Idiot, dude. Also, it is... Have you been time jumping at all? I haven't time jumped yet. I really want to because I, I just... I don't know. Have you done it yet? So I have because the thing is I usually... Generally when I play Animal Crossing, I try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, I usually... If I'm doing a time jump, it's like to make sure a shop is open or to go to the next day. It's never like, oh, I want to get December fish right now, so I'll skip to yeah. December. That feels weird to me. Um, but, yeah, dude, especially what I love about this new one is for the first time you're really starting from scratch, but that mm-hmm. also means, like, Tony and I were playing the first night, and Tony was just like, wait, do we wait have to wait a day in real life to play online together? And that yeah. was the case. We had to wait till the next morning. That sucks. The thing is, like, I'm so torn because I also understand that that's kind of the point of the game. It's the charm, yeah. It's like incorporate this into your daily life. Like, we don't want it to just take over your world. But also there's just some shit where I'm like, 
with the menus and, and, and just having to wait for stuff. I'm like, can we speed this up a little fucking bit? Like, the, why do I have to go into Tom Nook's workbench shit and one by one construct fish bait when I have ten clams that can't stack onto each other and shit? And like, well, just speed it up a little bit. You that's know? the thing is, especially because it's starting from scratch, like you start up Wild World. And it's an active town with, like, a bunch of villagers, and there's a post office, and there's a museum, you know? Like, mm -hmm. everything's going normal. But with this one, because the grind is there in a good way, like, I'm going to be excited to build up the town. But then it's like, okay, so real life day, you've done all you can do until tomorrow. So you might as well mm -hmm. make money. I, um, dude, I already up my, upgraded my house twice, too. Um, Damn, dude, you've been making bank. I gotta dude, fucking I, expedite. How I do I make money for fishing. faster? It's fishing, bro. Fishing the whole time. That's all I'm doing, though. So I will go out and I will comb the beaches for the manila clams, and I will get like all those little babies. I'll go and make a bunch of fish bait, and then I'll go to like a pond or something, and I'll keep tossing shit. In, uh, I you just know? fish. I just fish normally. I haven't even been doing the fish bait stuff. Damn. I um, been doing that. Yeah, and then uh, I've been getting lucky too. Like I, uh, you know, there's sorry if you guys don't play Animal Crossing and this is just boring, but um, yeah. there was uh, you know the gifts that float above and you have a slingshot and you can shoot it down. Yes, yes. Ten thousand bells dropped right into my lap. Ooh, baby, that's a good one. I guess I'm Mr. Moneybags is what I think they've been calling me in the comments oh, on YouTube. That's weird. I haven't seen a single control F right now on my phone. Not seeing any results of that. So. Really? Because I have I even was on the street, not the other day as in recently because of social distancing, but mm. the last time I could have realistically been on a street, a guy was like, yo, Mr. Moneybags. Hmm. Show. So the last time you could have been on the street was before Animal Crossing came out, so... Hmm. I time jumped. Oh, did Tony edit you in a couple days back? <laughs> <laughs> Tony edited me back to no, three Tony, weeks no, ago no, when Tony, society wasn't the, collapsing. <laughs> the space-time continuum. Dude, Tony has the power to solve this whole thing, dude. Dude, Tony, Tony send me shit. back. Tony, Tony send, send me back. back. I'll fight the coronavirus with my bare hands. Tony, tell Trump to reinstate the CDC two years ago. Please do that, Tony. Please, Tony. <laughs> Tony's just um, sitting at home, looks at the camera. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> he's just with the power. He's like putting his hands together. Just like, <laughs> I think I'll keep the world just as it is. <laughs> um, uh, wait, so we even had the podcast episode come out that we uh, said we didn't like good old Trump boy, right? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see literally any pushback at all. I didn't see I didn't, anybody say I a goddamn either. thing. Yeah, I, I cool. mean, I've, I've been getting a little bit more political on Twitter and stuff lately. And again, it's like it's not my, it's not really usually the name of my the game right now. The world is just in such fucking turmoil, and you feel so desperate. And it's like I never know if I'm adding to anything or if I'm just a voice in the wind. But I, I've, I've started doing it passively. But and I've seen like no fucking blowback though, which is which is kind of nice because mm. you know my main goal is just I just I want people to come and just hang out and chill and be happy and stuff. But. Mm. I, what a lot of people don't know too, if I can just speak on that for a second, is like I've I've always been very actively involved like in politics and stuff. I, I see a lot of comments of like, oh, is Sabrina making you like t tweet some of this like Bernie shit? And it's like, well, no, I've you no, know we both uh, supported Bernie in 2016 before you even knew yeah. Sabrina. Yeah, absolutely, and it it really was just kind of me coming to my own decision on that too, like. Uh, Sabrina didn't push me into doing anything, and it's been really largely positive. So I, I just it want the best for people. I don't know. Yeah, isn't it? That's the one uh, weird kind of not good thing that I've noticed about uh, doing like internet stuff. And it's, I mean, I guess any like public eye stuff is people yeah. just have like an idea for your relationships that uh, might not exist. It's just like this because I mean, like people should they just like assume mm -hmm. how you interact with people. Like, that idea that Sabrina would, like, sleeper cell push you to being more political is insane to me. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. And I, I certainly credit her for um, at giving me more perspective. Just I don't, in the so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I, I just said it to be funny. I don't know why I even said it. I'm going to grab a beer. Go ahead. <laughs> you do it. You do it. Um, yeah, I certainly credit Sabrina for, for giving me a little bit more perspective and maybe pointing to me towards some new, uh, like, I guess, sources. But they're all within the areas that I already believed in or that I was already seeking out. So, 
But I, I don't know. I guess I th thank you all for being supportive about stuff. Again, it's like I'm not gonna turn into like <laughs> doing Trump sketches and shit. Uh, but like you know, I, I like Bernie, and I'm gonna be voting for him. I think he's the best man for the job, and I think that Joe is not. So that's really you unfortunate. You should sketch idea Ma uh, make a sketch about how tiny Trump's hands are. Whoa, dude! Let's all oh, we'll get some orange paint, and then oh, what if? Oh, dude! What if, dude, get this. Instead of calling him Trump, no, you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. What if I called him Drump? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> both of the neighbors of both apartments probably think we're dying. Good. Uh, Fuck the good. neighbors, dude. They're so loud. You talking about upstairs neighbors or current the neighbors that I'm next to? The old neighbors and the new neighbors. Dude, these new fucking neighbors, they I, I met the dude like when I moved in. He was a very lovely guy. His his partner was there and we were all just amicable and meeting people and it was wonderful. And then the corona shit went down, and then like four days later he had a fucking party in the apartment next door. Wow. Holy Idiot shit. Idiot mode. Dude, Idiot mode. That's dumb as hell. Um, our current neighbors, I told you earlier, were uh, screaming about towels today. Why? So <laughs> something was wrong with the towels, dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> In my old bathroom downstairs, there's like, uh, there is actually a pretty sweet person that lives next door to us, and she's been very kind. And and like, I remember the first time that we met her was when Jakey and Sven and Tony were all visiting us. Because we, here. it was bad timing where we had they had just moved in and we were about to have a party, which is like the worst yes. impression you can make on somebody. So we went, and we're sweet boys. We went and we got bottles of wine for our neighbors and wrote the notes. Every time we got folks over, we'll do that now and, and just say, like, hey, we're having a little bit of a party. We'll try to keep it down. I hope you have a good night. Like, sorry, it's just going to get a little bit loud. We're good um, boys. We're you good guys boys. expect we're... us to not be good boys? Mm -mm. Unsubscribe if you think we're bad boys. Um, oh, but, hold on. Oh, no, no, okay, you stick around. We're in desperate times. We can't lose you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, i got to fucking fix my headphones. Oh. Um, okay. okay, I'll fix good. it. Uh, anyway, so we like we ran into this woman. It's just the sweetest lady, and it was she was a mother out in the hallway, and she just like, oh look at you boys. She goes, if you need anything, please just come over and ask. Like I want to, I'll cook you dinner sometime. Like just was the sweetest. But I guess that she has like a younger uh, son who's in high school or college, and I just hear her fucking bellowing at him all the time just mm. screaming at him and it's always like in the morning when I'm taking a shit in the bathroom and she'll be through the walls and I'll hear just like Bob I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> it's just like what the hell's going on yeah him? man I don't know because then the thing is when I see him around they just seem totally normal yeah um, it's like do you think I we can't hear that like you're so loud yeah. <laughs> like, how do you also, face us pet peeve uh, yeah. th not even a pet peeve but because like, it's not too common but this was, you know, probably like a day into the everything getting really serious. Yeah. I was um, going up in the elevator after running, and a UPS driver was at the steps outside of our building mm -hmm. and yelled to me to hold the elevator for her. That is and a it's distance like, that's so far. And I did because I was like, well, we've made eye contact now. And so I yeah. can't be like, nope, but nobody's holding elevator. I have not. Um, and I shouldn't even be taking the elevator in our building still when I go to run. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they're taking the stairs. I won't enter an elevator with another person right now. Are you, yeah. are you nuts? Yeah, good fucking move. Especially when I could be infected and shit. It's like I will when I had to go pick up because I had some shit like misdelivered. I covered my hands and my face and I took the like fire exit stairs. They're not like outside the building, like a fire escape, but like nobody uses the stair shit. So like I went yeah. down there, I'm covering every doorknob and it's like, don't get into that little like poison box that elevators are right now. That's virus central. Exactly. I just yeah, don't know, Eddie. I, just I don't, don't know. know. You want to hit up another pregunta? Yeah, let's look at some preguntas here. Um, also, I will add that I thought it was hilarious. Somebody said us complaining about our neighbors, and then it was like Gus and Eddie every episode scream <laughs> yeah. mail. Yeah, I do point. understand that once a week, maybe we're loud for 10 seconds. That's just yes. a hilarious post. That's really it, good. It was such a good meme. And if I may absolve us, we, we scream mail specifically at, at such a decibel rate, such a frequency that adults over the age of 35 are actually unable to hear. Actually, only dogs can hear it. 
That's true. Have your dog listen to the podcast. When we yell mail, they're going to start biting you on the leg, all right? Yeah, Tony has to fuck with the frequency in editing just for you guys to hear it. It's a whole yeah. thing. If you if you see the raw footage, that the pre-Tony footage, we go, Eddie, hey, how about we, we open up some... <laughs> 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 also, I just want to remind everyone again that Tony does have the power to go back in time and stop the coronavirus, and he's actively not doing it and playing Animal Crossing right now. Hour by hour, he considers it, and he goes, fucking nope, I ain't doing it. <laughs> he Dude. goes, but I picked up a conch shell in Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, save humanity, but I also got this conch shell. <laughs> Uh, dude, anyway, dude, speaking of that frequency thing, I can't, uh, here's a bingo slot for you. I don't remember if I said this on the podcast before. Um, but did I ever tell you about that substitute teacher that I pulled that like high decibel prank on? Mm, um, I don't think so, but I, we'll, oh, uh, we'll do I the 2020 update. The, wait, what's up? I'll give you the 2020 update version. Got if it. anything, I said it a long ass time ago. Uh, so there's a substitute teacher. If you live in a small town, you pretty much, there's a short list of like five substitute teachers that you have from grades one to 12. You know, there's just a finite source of teachers, but we had this dude in high school who was never, I'd never seen him before. He was like an older man. He was probably some dude that was retired and he came in and, uh, he was, uh, like overseeing our Spanish class and we had to walk down to the computer lab and we were taking a test in there. So because he was so old, a prank that I went to go play on like my other classmates was right before we sat down and he hit that switch that turns off all the like monitors, you know, so kids can't use them during the test. Mm -hmm. I quick like Googled a YouTube video and it was like the 10 hour loop of just that like like that really right, high yeah. frequency thing where it's like legitimately if you're like over like 25, you can't hear that frequency. So I went in and then he shut the screens off and I just had it on full screen. So I'd be taking the test and I'd really quietly like tap the space bar and then pss, like it would, it would blast <laughs> everybody and everyone was just going, oh, what the heck is that? Like, and they didn't know what was going on. And this guy couldn't hear anything. So he was just like reading a book or something. And he started noticing that that the students were just like, going, what the hell is that? And he's like, what, what's, what's going on? What's going on right now? And, uh, and this kid, Austin, he goes, don't you hear that? Like, it's like this high pitched, like squeal, like it sounds like shell shock. And this old man, I'm not, I don't know if I should say it. He said a bad racial slur. He says, he goes, he goes, oh, shell shock. What are you picturing blasting up them G-O-O-Ks right now? Uh, what? <laughs> like he just fuck. He said, "Oh, you picture him blasting up the and just says it," and everyone was just like, "What the fuck did you just like?" It was so casual, you know. Are you allowed to send your substitute teacher to the principal's office if yeah, you're a student? I was, I was like, "What are you doing?" He just threw it out there like it was like, "Are you making a joke?" Or like, "What are you doing right now?" And everyone was just like, "Uh." And I don't know if anybody said something, but I never saw him ever again. So. Oh man, they do. They took him out into the uh, by the volleyball courts and they shot him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> that He's was because like, of you, Gus. You did that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Next time we'll say Oriental like a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just. Ugh. I don't know why the hell he thought that was a good idea, but yeah, anyway. that's not. That's. I think I mentioned on the podcast before. Is one time a gym teacher of mine to uh, one of my black friends was like, he was sitting further away from everyone. And mm -hmm. he was like, just give me a, I'll just say uh, his name was John. It sure. wasn't. Um, I, sometimes you make a fake name to hide somebody's identity, Gus, in a story. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now. So oh. when I say John, not his name. Um, just thought I'd give you the rundown. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you bringing me up to speed. <clears throat> but yeah, he goes, it was this like older teacher and he would kind of talk like this all the time. And he's like, yeah. uh, John, uh, segregation's over. Get back over here. Like, try to do a bit for it. <laughs> and, like, it was just like, what were you thinking, buddy? Like, what the hell? Because it's like you could tell he was trying to be fun, but then also was, like, pretty racist. It's yeah. like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> He's like, what's what's a real relatable line I can hit him with? Yeah. So you guys remember segregation, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just mention the fact that you're sitting far away from us because I think that you think you're black and shouldn't sit with us yeah oh my god i just some of that old shit especially in like old midwestern towns i feel like there's a lot of those folks that fly under the radar but i feel like the most racist shit you ever hear is from like 
a family friend middle-aged man that you've never met before but is at a party and mm-hmm. he'll tell a joke where you're like yo yeah dude it's like what the actual fuck and then there's that like kind of you know look like we're all we're all on the same team here so don't tell on me you know mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> come on it's like no i'm not i'm not <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm a picker i'm not picking you no dude <laughs> Um, all right, preguntas. Yeah. yeah, I got a pregunta right here. This one comes from at Jommies69. Hell yeah, <laughs> brother. Uh, my roommate recently threw away all our forks and spoons and replaced them all with forks. Suffice to say, I am oh, not whoa. a happy camper. I told him it's not the same thing, but he says we get double the function out of one utensil. Please tell whoa. me I'm not crazy. What? what? Okay, first forks. off. What? Okay. <laughs> my advice to the roommate is... Uh, before throwing out the forks and spoons and buying spoons or buying forks, yeah. just throw the spoons out then because <laughs> yeah. you already had the forks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't, dude. I don't know that, what the logic is here. Is he trying to say like they have more than one purpose? Cause it's like, if I had to choose between having a spoon and a fork, I don't like, I might I, choose a fork, but... I would choose a fork because I could slurp without yes. a spoon, but I wouldn't enjoy slurping all the time. Yeah, and I wouldn't bill it as like, okay, so now, you know, as we all know, the, the fork has a double function. It has enough of a concave base to, like, have soup in it. It's like, that, no, like, no. maybe... Even sporks are a joke of an absolute spo- spoon. It's a shitty fork. It's a terrible spoon. I don't know the why. The only thing that sporks are good for are cheesy Fiesta potatoes at Taco Bell, and that's it. See, I can see that, and it's got enough of that mush to it, you know, where it's like yeah. you, just need, you just need that little tongue to bite in there, but you're just scooping all at once. Yeah. Oh, th- that... I do also use two sporks when I cut and eat steak, though, so that's the other function. You um, use sporks when you eat steak? Yeah, just exclusively two sporks. One is a knife and the other as a spork. How do you cut uh, it? <laughs> with the spork. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, well, <I> mean. <laughs> uh, you got well, another question for Well, us? since you rephrased it like that, now I get you. Um, yeah, what do I got here? Um, at Ethan Garcia 152 says, what is the best cereal slogan or catchphrase? That's a good question. Oh man. I don't shit. I don't know. Just specifically for cereal. Yeah. Um, I think lucky charms is always one of the catchiest. Yeah. And Cause it's, it's not just delicious. Jingle. It's magically delicious. That's true. You it's only, like, if you're a kid, it's like you don't even the realm that you know doesn't exist <laughs> in how delicious the cereal is. I am always a proponent of a of a catchphrase that is that is I mean I guess catchy that's the whole name of the game but catchy but also kind of dumb and really simple you know mm-hmm. so I think I really like Frosted Flakes where it's just like yeah they're great yeah there you go <laughs> and it's um, like you even got that little tiger mini joke in there they're great it's like yeah, yeah. all right that's simple D- dude I. One thing is with cereal stuff, I don't know, because, you know, we don't get advertising that's meant for children anymore, Yeah, is just so genius of why it was so common. But uh, cartoon mascots trying their hardest to get their hands on the product made yeah. me want them so bad as a kid all the time. That's a good point. Yeah, because it's like definitely Trix did that. Definitely Lucky Charms did that. Did, did Rice Cookie Krispies? Crisp. Cookie Crisp did it too, but then they changed it to some fucking, uh, or they, I think it was like they had a friendly dog that would give it them Cookie Crisp and then they changed yeah. it to copying. Um, was tri- tricks or Cocoa Puffs was the same too, right? Um, Cocoa cause they fucking, the bird would go nuts when he had Cocoa Puffs. Oh but yeah. I don't the know bird was, kept... the bird was in like a perpetual AA program for his fucking Cocoa yeah. Puff addiction. And it's Dude, like... they would always try it. One, fuck Cocoa Puffs. I'm going to say it. What? Oh, Cocoa Pebbles are way better oh, than Cocoa Puffs. Oh, are you kidding? Oh, this is a hard line split for me and you, Dude, Eddie. Cocoa Puffs gives a film on your mouth for no fucking reason, and Cocoa Pebbles are way easier to chew and better. I don't know, dude. The thing is with the the pebble variety is you pour in the milk, and it's just sludge in four bites, You're pour- though. pouring too much milk. I'm not pouring too much milk. I'm pouring the appropriate amount of milk. Cause like, if, you, if you pour the appropriate amount of milk, it still stays crispy, and you got milk. I can't imagine what amount of milk you're pouring in right now, though. That's got to be like the correct milk. amount. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, all right, I'll get some pebbles if the Amazon Fresh is still delivering. I will 
waste a delivery person's vital time by adding cocoa pebbles to the order so I can test this out. Absolutely. And, and dude, but the thing is though, cocoa puffs. First of all, I don't experience the film thing. I'm not familiar with that. I guess I just have alpha mouth. I guess it's weird. Nah. Uh, it's crazy. But uh, anyway, so you, with the cocoa puffs though, they're big enough where you, you always concentrate the milk pour in one spot. I hate these, these psychopaths. Some people just slather milk across the whole surface of the cereal. It's like you're dampening it prematurely. You got to concentrate it in one spot. But well, they have the such a volume fuck- though. Sorry, what? Is, they have such a the volume. Disc- there's, there's, there's the Discord leg. Yeah, like they're yeah. so big that if you pour in one spot, enough of them are just going to maintain the stacking in the other side of the bowl so you can kind of just scrape them off the top as need be and every bite's a fresh bite, you know? But my whole thing with especially fuck Cocoa Puffs is why the fuck wouldn't I eat uh, Reese's Puffs instead? They're Reese's- slightly... They're fucking fire, dude. They are fire, but they also feel a little heavier, you know? Like, I, I just feel a little more bloated if I eat a lot of Reese's Puffs. I disagree. The, <laughs> they seem know, like dude. the same grainy fucking... <laughs> I mean, they got extra fat in it. They got that lard in That's it. That's it. Bet. They got that... Yeah, they they added Reese's Puffs uh, with just a ton of lard. <laughs> now <Yeah>. add... <laughs> it's, lard. it's multi-grain and vitamins and lard. <laughs> dude, the Reese's Puffs commercials were cool as a kid, though. Remember? Yeah, they Reese's were incredible. Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Those are really Don't good forget uh, peanut butter chocolate flavor. Peanut butter That's chocolate the... flavor. Genius. Absolutely genius. genius. Uh, you got another pregunta? You got damn right I do, but what do you say we take a quick break and open a little piece of mail? Um, right. So, yeah, I'm the only one with the mail <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, I'm going to go grab one if you want to read the AT&T <laughs> letters that yeah. you got. <laughs> I think we've spoken about this before. Those bastards are getting sneaky with their with their sending in of ads. Like I've I I've gotten some. Up. You're speaking to me, sorry. All right, good shit. I'm talking to the viewer at home. Love you, babies. Um, these these fuckers, especially AT and T, does it a lot, and Directv starting to do it, where they make these things that make it look like handwritten envelopes. And so you open it up and it'll be like, oh, to Mr. Johnson, who's sending me a little Tom Nook letter in the mail? Oh, it's fucking AT&T? Stop doing that. I'm so gullible. Don't do it to me anymore. It's so mean. Eddie gets what I'm saying. He knows what I'm saying. Yeah, I grabbed um, a box, but it seems to be from a sponsor. So oh, let me that- check if it's the sponsor for this week and don't mention their name if it's not. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. Did I leave any beautiful bastard boxes down there, by the way? Uh, I don't know. Phil sent me home with a couple of packages of the beautiful bastard stuff. But little does he know, I don't take care of myself, so I uh, <laughs> not really use them as much. <laughs> was it? I thought you said one of them was for your boy. Oh, yeah. One of them's there for you, so I can't remember if I left one. Because uh, I don't know if I... Ha- I think I have one up here in the apartment. I don't see any, so if you got your gribber grabbies on both <laughs> of them, Damn. I'm going to be upset. I'll, I'll send some pomade down the trash chute. You just catch it when it comes <laughs> out, all right? I wonder if that would hurt or, uh, honestly, I wonder if it would work. I feel like yeah. it would, just like if I put, like, a small net and you just the pomade <laughs> explodes. You know you just get somebody's compost bin, though, before the pomade comes yeah. down. Dude, our, our trash chute is uh, bullshit. It's so small. What's it's, the point? It's, it's a joke because it's tiny as fuck. And it always reeks, which I get is the point, but it's like beyond like where you can smell it some days before you're you're even opening the door to open the door to open the trash chute. There's like three mm-hmm. leather, layers of protection and it's tiny as fuck. And the two rules that they have on there, they're like, I think they say like no pizza boxes, which is like that's half of what everyone's going to be throwing down the fucking trash. But also you couldn't box. even fit a pizza box in that trash. Chute. You couldn't fit it. And then there's another silly rule. I don't remember what it is. It's like no shopping bags. It's like, what? Yeah. Which the only thing you could fit is like a bathroom shopping bag garbage. Um, yeah. Like a half full bag of Walmart, like, like a Walmart shopping bag is all you can fit down there. So anyway. we do. It's not the box. We'll do mail in a second. Do do we just do the ad right now? I feel yes, like we do it. we'll do it live right now. Let's do okay, it. Okay, well, fuck it. We'll do it live. Who is it? It is. Wait, let me just double check before I say it. Uh, just checking the sheet again. So, yeah, it is Mac Weldon. Yay. I'll fully say I love Mac Weldon. I've been wearing Mac Weldon underwear. This is not part of the ad. I've, I've been wearing Mac Weldon underwear for like two and a half years. I'm wearing Mac Weldon joggers right now. Mm. Um, 
I I have been able to uh, every time we do an ad, they'll give me uh, some free stuff. So I my wardrobe has been that. Um, okay, so I have to um, talk for a second. Gus, say something so I can read this ad sheet for a second. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Uh, is- All right, guys. So today's episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon, like I just mentioned. Um, Mac Weldon values its loyal customers. That's why they've created the Weldon Blue Loyalty Program. Here's how it works. You create an account for free, you place an order for any amount, and never pay for shipping again. Once you purchase $200 worth of products from Mac Weldon, not only will you continue to receive free shipping, but you also will save uh, 20% on every order you make for the next year. It also grants you access to new products before they're released uh, to anyone else, as well as free gifts added to the future orders. Uh, Mac Weldon, guys, is um, I'm not I'm not reading the ad sheet now. It's just high quality underwear and clothing and uh, joggers that I like a lot. Uh, so if you want to get some Mac Weldon, then um, I didn't scroll far enough. Gus, stall for me for a moment. Hello, my Mac. Hello, my Weldon. <laughs> oh no! Buy undies now. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I actually will say, I, we only say, I know it sounds like we say it often, but for brands that we do, like I, I've found a lot of success with my Mack Weldon clothing. Mm-hmm. So um, if you want uh, some Mack Weldon gear uh, for 20% off your first order, visit Mack Weldon and enter the promo code Gus and Eddie, all lowercase and all one word, Gus and Eddie. Um, so again, that is for 20, per, ah, I fucked it up, but we're keeping it in for 20% off your first order. Visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code Gus and Eddie. Hell yeah. Um, thanks, that's the Mac. ad. Good thanks, job, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mac. You're a good guy. <laughs> uh, Eddie, make a good point too. Like, yeah, that, that is, a, that is an actual testimonial from Eddie. Um, when I do like my ad stuff too, I, I like to make sure to let you guys know if it's just like, Hey guys, here's the service. If you want to use it for this, this would be a good way to do it. But if I actually do use it and I like it, like I'll tell you too. Um, the the ad deals that I sign up for, like especially in the last two years, I don't, I haven't done any ones where I'm making commission off of them, so I'm not incentivized to be like, go buy. I'll just do it for like a flat rate kind of thing. So especially, I want to say too, coming up on the main channel, uh, I I I got lucky that I, I I got a bulk deal for for Raycon headphones. So I just I have a lot of Raycon headphones as I'm going to do this year. Just just preparing for the meme of it. Um, I locked that down a couple months ago, so you're just going to get a bunch of them. Uh, I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to fucking foist headphones on you during an apocalypse. If you got side cash, pick them up. Who cares? But it doesn't hurt me if you don't grab them. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Um, um, all right, I got some ma- mail. Let me say it. Ma- say it with me. Ma- mail. Oh! <laughs> It's probably so out of sync. Um, okay, so this one is marked uh, as fragile handle with care. Okay. Um, it just says Thompson on it. So uh, I don't know if that's somebody's name. or Dude, it's the uh, Thompson twins. They sent us their gold record for their hit single, Hold Me Now. Can't wait to open it. Thank God. Hell yeah. Oh, what is dude. It? It's a Blue's Clues uh, PC game uh, disc, and it's the one I played when I was a kid, dude. Oh, that's fucking rad. We finally got that, that one. Yeah. That was even last time there was, um, uh, I, I think I mentioned like last week that we didn't get uh, that Blue's Clues game. Yeah. Little did I know, my uh, dumb ass, it was sitting in a package like two feet from us. Tisk tisk, dare I say. Tisk okay. tisk. There's a note. You ready? Yep. I'm listening. I'm just checking my camera because I'm a paranoid baby. Okay. So this is from Daniela J. It's a dedicated boy. Dear uh, Gustav and Edward, I love the podcast. I listen every week. I saw this week's 22420, and I heard Eddie mention the Blue's Clues Carnival game. Oh, so it was after. From his childhood, this game is also uh, near and dear to my heart. I grew up playing it, and it was by far my favorite game. I have ne- You gave me your favorite game? Oh, my God. Wow. I have never had anyone else share that sentiment, so I went online to get a copy. Oh, it's a copy. Cool. Of I was like actually getting kind of sad. It's like your favorite childhood game. Please don't yeah. give it to me. Um, so she got me an extra copy. Thank you so much, Daniela. That's nice as hell. Dude, that's uh, rad as hell. Appreciate you, Daniela. Hell yeah. Okay, we got another um, package. Oh, and shit. We, how many more packages do we have? I, maybe not we should a lot. ration those. Um, you want me to do two, though? Let's do two. We'll do two. Okay. Feeling good. Okay. Where the fuck did I put the raptor knife? Here it is. So this one is from uh, Chris Templeton, but I need to open it, so talk. 
Okay, Chris, thanks for thank you for sending stuff in. Uh, oh, by the way, this seems like a good appropriate amount of time to insert my boy of the week. Uh, I've got I've got YouTube division and I've got real world edition. First of all, my boys of the week are the fucking people that are still delivering shit out there that are running the stores, the clinics, the 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 Walgreenses and stuff. Thank you, holy shit, stay safe. Thank you for keeping our dumb asses safe and supplied during this time. We need you, boys. I need you. I yearn for you. And also, uh, my YouTube boys of the week. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we didn't get them before the quarantine, but the super mega fellas. We were talking about uh, uh, Animal Crossing shit later. They got a fantastic Animal Crossing series. If you want some, just a solid chunk of cool, feel good entertainment during the quarantine, check out Matt and Ryan's. Uh, uh, Animal Crossing shit. Love Hell yeah, dude. Love Hello, and also, we did a drawful uh, thing with them, and we're on their podcast. So definitely. Did we plug the Super Mega? We, ha- we did plug the I Super Mega podcast. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think we did, yeah. So we got a package from Templeton Tonics. Uh, oh. Uh, so it's... Um, dude, I don't know what this even is. It says, Firm Hold Water-Based Clay. And I oh. opened it, and it uh, seems like clay. <laughs> Okay, is and it, it like smell- sculpting clay? I don't know. It smells good. I touched it and it just got on my fingies, so I don't like that that much. Not against Templeton, but that's against my own uh, personal. I don't like things on my fingies. Yeah. Um, let me grab another one. Let's see. This one is uh, a water-based clay. All right. <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of it. Um, so thank you, uh, Templeton Tonic. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Appreciate it. Sounds like a sponsor. Sandra Templeton, my sweetheart. That was my my girlfriend's name in the Big Fish play I did. Okay. It was fake. Um, I'm incapable of feeling real love, so don't worry about that. Did you let Sabrina know about that before you got into a multi-year relationship? Oh, I didn't do that. So You should probably, uh, like, I don't know, send her an AIM message or something about it. Sabrina, she's so far away, though. I wouldn't want to try to yell and try to have someone else in the building. I feel like you should probably let her know. Um, I'll, I'll get her. She'll she'll circle around. She comes through here once a day, clean stuff up. So I'll I'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so awful. <laughs> know, um, but uh, what was your AIM username? Embarrass yourself. I didn't have a name at all, actually. Oh, or okay. a MySpace My, didn't have that shit either. Mine mine was basketballin one three two four. That's the person that I was at the time. You just gave me the biggest direction of my professional career. That's so cool. I hear that all the time. So that's I must be doing good in <laughs> that, Hollywood. That verbatim phrase. <laughs> yeah, I just it's any time I have any kind of meeting. <laughs> they say that's when I was at Comedy Central. Everybody said it, even women. You just gave me the biggest erection. Yeah, listen, say erection boner. What did you say? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you hear this all the time. But uh. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry if this is out of line. But <laughs> in all my days, <laughs> <laughs> in all my days. Um, oh, all right, you got more preguntas because we, we we're done with me. me- me- oh. I keep starting and then waiting for you to do it, but I forget you're on a delay because you're. It's isn't this podcast fun, guys? It's the best podcast in the world. I'm close to uh, finishing beer two, and I didn't eat today, so I'm buzzing a little bit. You, oh, I like it, dude. I'm gonna get a little torque dude, later on tonight because I, kill the virus with with bad stuff. You and I are very uh, responsible drinkers. Um, I've not even been, been getting drunk, but occasionally just having a beer or two midday. Cause I'm so bored. It's yeah. like, there's nothing to do. And then I'm like, all right, might as well, might as well just have a Bud Light or two. I went a little turbo mode a couple nights ago. Uh, I was playing, first of all, again, we, I've been having so much fucking fun playing Warzone shit. Like that's scratching my back. Yeah, dude. Itch, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I had a couple of coquilas a couple nights ago and I was okay. turbo mode, man. <laughs> Oh no! It was just I. We got lucky too. Before, uh, like I had to self quarantine shit. When when I was still going out to stores, I went down to Ralph's, and uh, uh, they had uh, bottles of Jose Cuervo that were misprints, where the labels were just kind of right. off, and it was six bucks a bottle. And I was like, holy shit! But I only got a couple of bottles. But yeah, I just had some Diet Coke and and some misprint Jose Cuervo. <laughs> So I um I still even kind of during quarantine times I door dashed uh, a big case of Bud Light and mm-hmm. then I just um uh kicked it in with my foot and then disinfected the box and then the cans were fine. That's a good idea. I just suplexed the uh, the Amazon fresh order I got the other day. I just RKO'd it off the top of the door frame and yep. killed all the viruses. I, I was glad. I don't want to. 
um, mention uh, certain like details for stuff, but I, I, Jakey and I talked about like certain fresh stuff that got because uh, he just moved. Like uh, guys, send one thing is send Jakey some love. He moved to New York the mm-hmm. fucking like four days before this all happened, which yeah. is like. Oh man, you is know, he just, up okay? Maybe we he's stocked start... up now. No, 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 no. we it's talked good. about it. Yeah, he's good. 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 He's good. This Maybe that, we it was start, like uh, skyping in a couple folks sometimes. Too, no, that's what actually I was gonna say. Um, that's why when we were talking about the, what Discord server we were going in this episode, I thought we'd introduce it with both of us. But sure. honestly, while we're doing bonus episodes now that nobody has to come here, we should just do guests a lot. Like, why not? I love that idea. We'll be like the Jimmy Fallon at home show. You've been watching any of those? Um, no, I've seen, uh, images of them and I'm like, we've been doing this stuff on YouTube. Why would I watch uh, Jimmy Fallon do it? <laughs> be, dude, we need more YouTubers. That's why. The, um, is it good at all? The, the thing that's, it's, it's interesting again, uh, as in traditional late night stuff, Conan's transition to, to online shit. Have you seen any of his online videos in the quarantine? No, I saw him tweet about it, but I've been listening to his uh, podcast a lot, but I haven't seen the videos now. Oh my God. Again, he proves in every venue that he is just the best in his field at what he does. Yep. I, the, Absolutely. The, f- the first thing that I saw him do was just this at home tip thing where he's like, he, he talks about, all right, what's everybody going to do during the quarantine? Obviously, you're playing with your thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle. Now, listen, you're going to get hands on this, and it's dirty as shit. So I'm going to show you how to disinfect it. And it was just like a three-minute video of him boiling a 1,000-piece <laughs> jigsaw puzzle <laughs> on the stove. <laughs> it's like God, Conan is, Conan so is much. shitposting right now. Like, he's the fucking king. I love it. Um, yeah, dude. It's, it's really weird seeing Colbert again. It's like, I'm a fan of Colbert, but I can't watch his fucking late night stuff, especially in the last few years. It's just the same shit all over again. I'm just echoing what you said in your late night video. By the way, if you guys haven't seen Eddie's late night video, one of his absolute best, please go check that out. It's so fucking uh, well done. Thanks, buddy. Um, but especially Colbert doing his same monologue and like joke styles, but with no audience. It wait, just, he's doing this. Wait, is he? He's doing it at home though, right? I saw his first at home thing, and he was in the bathtub, and he was trying to do some monologue shit there. And uh, I also saw that after they were still in the Ed Sullivan theater, theater, and they just had a small yeah. I crew. saw that one. And it's just like his jokes, especially with no laughter, is like, oh, yeah, like I already knew these were kind of boring, but like, wow, these are really lame, like boomer jokes. Like, it's just fucking weird, you know? Yeah, well, that's the thing is where I can't even fully blame him, where, where it seems like a lot of kind of boomer people on the left really, really like Colbert. And it's like, I guess yeah. if that's for him, but. He, I was like 12 and and the Colbert Report resonated with me. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I was a 12 year old and it still grabbed me, like the fact that now it's like, I guess if it works for boomers, it's just like sad to me. Yeah. One thing too is I've actually not enjoyed like consuming wise because I don't ever watch like Tonight Show clips really unless it's like. Maybe Unless the like guest is somebody cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and I know Jimmy takes a lot of heat and stuff, and uh, but I think that at least his home quarantine shit within the microcosm of the late night show hosts doing their own stuff, like it's refreshing because it's so much of Jimmy's personality and stuff is in there. Like his that wife, was my guess. Is yes, especially is just the thing is because again, Jimmy Fallon is a likable guy, mm-hmm. and so like you might not believe he's in that position, but it's like. Who's going to be on top of like him or Kimmel or Colbert when they're recording at home? It's yeah. the likable dude. That's kind of what YouTube's about. And it's like, I, I get too how some might see it as like pandering where like it's so like it's his wife filming and his kids are running around and he has his daughters make up the graphics for the show. But I'm like, that's sweet. I like that. I like, that. like I don't think yeah. that that seems forced at all. Like he's just leaning into it and shit and he's not really editing stuff out. He'll have times where his little girl will like slide down his slide and, and come in and be like, daddy, I made this. Like, Oh honey, where are your toys? I'm going to no, go, go play. And he'll just keep it in. It's like, that's what I want to like see as a human perspective of him right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, I think has always been the weird thing about late night and YouTube is that it's like so fake but then also that's why I dude I just like there is so rarely a late night monologue that I think is good Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like even I love Conan to death but like Conan's monologues it's like dude just can you cut this part out of the show that's what I liked with Seth Meyers is he tried the monologue thing and then everyone was like Seth we want to see you behind a desk if you're going to do this and he's like okay and did it yeah he listened to it 
Good, because you're better behind a desk telling jokes. We saw a weekend update. That's good. I yeah. don't. I just think a lot of the time there's no more room for just like a dude standing and on an empty set in front of a brick wall, just like not not for stand up, but I because be, monologues aren't really stand up. You know, it's like your yeah. writers handed you some jokes that are topical, and it's like. Uh, some dumb punchline about how big Kim Kardashian's butt is and it's like mm-hmm. sick that's so fun yeah can we throw to a little uh, printed out piece of paper on this fucking black card for some reason instead of throwing it up on screen that's great yeah it's sorry it just started cutting out so much as you said that don't, I, I, I assure you it was the it was one of the funniest things you're gonna hear today I don't want to repeat it though but the people at home they know they get of up. my career this is the hardest I've been <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh uh, also, we got any more prank we just loaded up or? We absolutely do. Uh, one final note on the late, late show thing stuff that I wanted to talk about is again, it's like the talk of the town and everyone's is, is speaking about it online and shit, but it really is weird. Like seeing celebrities react to this. Like it's so yeah. many people are getting in the spotlight of, Oh my God, you're a fucking out of touch asshole. You Dude, know? Dude, how about, uh, what's the girl's name from lost and she was in the Hobbit. Hmm. The uh, one that it was like know. Evangeline Lily, is oh, that her. it, or like yeah, yeah. is that, or is it Lily Evangeline? Either way, where she was just like, N- I don't think I'll quarantine or self isolate. I just don't believe in it. I believe in freedom, and it's like, oh my yo, god. oh my god, you're already so rich and famous. Like, holy, sh-. same thing with Vene- Vanessa yeah. Hudgens. <laughs> if they die, you know, it's yeah. like, Can oh you, my god, dude, what a what a enormous risk, zero like return fucking position to put yourself in like why would you come out so strong on the like the front end of a global pandemic where you're like this is a joke like this will age poorly six hours from now like what are you doing dude i just can't even believe that it's the problem is a lot of celebrities are live streaming so Mm -hmm. they can't take it back and you could tell even in the full clip she's like maybe i shouldn't be doing this right now it's like well at least you had that foresight to say like maybe you shouldn't be saying who cares if people die when they maybe could live longer? Yeah. What was the Ellen thing? I saw like screenshots of her sobbing at home, but I don't know. I, what I only that saw was. the screenshots, so I don't. I, the thing is, it's again where it's like it kind of pissed me off where I saw a headline about like celebrities are not having fun, but it's like I didn't look into it, so yes. I can't talk about it. Let's not do um, any research and go ahead and throw Ellen into that mix and say, <laughs> "Yeah, get her." That'll do Let's, the world good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, like, you want to do uh, one final pregunta? Here's the pregunta to end all, the end the sickness. Like, if we answer this pregunta, we will finally overcome Tony, and he will crack, and he'll lose all the Infinity Stones <laughs> and save the world. Um, so this comes at, at us from at Finn Paulson. It says, disagreement. I used to work at a bowling alley, and people bowling in leagues could put money into a pot and get a chance to win it at the end. My manager would staple the money to their sheets. I told her this was insane and just use an envelope. Tell me I'm not wrong. Uh, wait. Uh. So they would staple through the money on and, like, like, put holes in the money and staple it to a piece of paper. For the winner? Yeah, yeah, and would, like, regularly do this for either the winner or the employees and stuff. But I think that this person is zeroing in on, like, stapling through this money. I got to say, if you were to ask me of the two, I would say put it in an envelope, but Mm -hmm. I don't really have a super strong... I mean, it's just annoying where it's like... uh, That's actually... I've never really thought of... I've never had to unstaple money from something, so I don't know. I And I I acknowledge that maybe this is a little bit petty, too, but I, I take a harder stance of, like, if... Why would you go out of your way to fuck up the money at, at all? Like, like, why wouldn't you just hand it to them with the sheet of paper? Yeah, and, like, I remember when I used to work at the pizza place back in high school, like, my boss for tips and, like, gas money and stuff, you know, sometimes if you clocked out early, you wouldn't get all your shit right away. So they had this bulletin board, and they would double... They had these extra wide thumbtacks. They would use two thumbtacks tack your money to the bulletin board and you have to go like rip your money off the board and your whole your money would have these little holes punched in it and i was just like jesus that just seems weird or like you know i know the places too where maybe it's like a, a restaurant or something or a bar like if you give them a big bill uh sometimes even 20s they'll mark you know but like they don't use the regular mm. like big bill marker which which disappears i regularly will see a bar be like you hand them a 50 and they'll be like oh okay and they'll take a big black sharpie out 
and just draw a line through the whole thing. And it's like, mm. th- you're fucking up the money here. Like, I know that there's a lot of it. And, you know, I've, I'm sure in videos before, like, I probably, like, burned a dollar or some shit. But it's like, why would you... You don't need to fucking Sharpie across the face of the whole dollar bill like that. It just looks so dumb. Yeah, you could just test it a little bit. Test I, the waters. That was one thing uh, we had uh, at the concession stand. We had like one of the kind of like infrared scanner one. Not scanner, but you put it under the light for it. But yeah. it would always remain unplugged and out of the way. And then they would say like, yeah, if somebody gives you like even a 20 test it it's like yeah uh we're at a water park i'm not i'm not gonna do that there's not even a chance there's one thing bad uh (laughs) i hope tony can choose to cut this out if he doesn't want us to but uh, (laughs) um i um at the end of the concession stand time i may i I think i might have mentioned this on the podcast was like uh we were already had like a system going for everything and tony and i were managing and the owner who i know and like a lot so i probably shouldn't say this but you know whatever yeah. um was like hey we're going to do smoothies now which if anybody knows that works in food the second something new completely different is added your work becomes way harder you know like anytime it's like hey we're thinking about doing this new thing it's like well you fuck the system i already have you know yeah um and so he's like i'm adding he brought in blenders and he brought in smoothie mix And was like taught us how to make smoothies and making smoothies was so slow and Mm -hmm. so messy where it's like somebody could just, you know, easily order a smoothie with every order when you have a line of a hundred people. But like where it's like, say you get three orders of chicken tenders. I can throw all the tenders in at once and cook them all. But a smoothie is like, you have to make one, clean the blender, make another, clean the blender, make another. So it's like you get backed up. So, um, whenever Tony and I were managing people that knew, uh, they wouldn't tell on us, we would just, anytime somebody asked for a smoothie, we'd be like, just ran out of mix. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Like every single time, like I, I did not sell a single smoothie (laughs) while I was out in the main room for the entire summer. And I'm sure the owner was like, what? It's the summer. Why aren't people buying smoothies? He's like, I'm sorry. You can't just add this in. You should have run yeah. it by me, somebody who is not invested in the business even a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember when I used to work at this bistro at the dairy in our town, like we had these items called crostinis. And in, in, in <laughs> essence, like it was a really clever way to use up like old bread shit because we sold sandwiches like crazy and we had these nice artisanal breads or whatever. Um, but what, 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 what they were was if bread got a little bit old and just a little bit stale is our boss would have us cut up the bread into strips and then, uh, they would sprinkle like a little bit of like oil on the bread and then a tight, like a small cluster of Parmesan cheese and some herbs and shit. And would like put it in the oven. So it just turned into like this really, really hard, super chewy, like, bread toast thing and and the idea was that like you'd sell them with soups and shit but the thing is they took forever to make because you had to cut up all this bread and wait for them to cook and shit and nobody really ate them anyway so i started like telling people i was like listen when we sell soup you're supposed to say hey do you want crackers or crostinis like offer crackers and if they ask about the crostinis give it to them but it's like i'm i'm rolling pizzas and i'm looking out nobody eats the fucking crostinis anyway nobody really wants them but if you give them the choice between a shitty cracker or this thing that looks better they'll just choose it and it's not going to get eaten so i started telling them was like don't fucking offer the crostinis they're shitty Dude, that what used to drive me insane with like, especially it would be teenage cashiers yeah. where they want to do the best job possible. But like we would have nachos and we had jalapenos, but during like a giant rush, uh-huh. they would be serving nachos and be like, do you want jalapenos as well? And like no. they were free if somebody asked, but it's like, don't ask them, yeah. let them ask. And then we'll supply it to them because most people are going to say yes to something free, no matter what. Uh-huh. And we're in the middle of a rush. So don't do that. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Oh, man, and just... then you don't want to be the manager that they're like, yeah, they told me not to give the customer all the options. It's like, bro, it's life or death right now. <laughs> I yeah, can't do this shit. It's definitely quantity over quality at that point too. 
I also, I just got to say, it's it's raining again. Yeah. And just to add to the, like, kind of apocalypse feel, uh, L.A. has been cloudy. And this is not to you, obviously. It's to everyone uh-huh. else. L.A. has been cloudy and rainy, like, just when coronavirus stuff started. Like, it has mm-hmm. been fucking, like, depressing as hell here, uncharacteristically, since everything started. And it feels bizarre as fuck. Like, to put into perspective, it almost never fucking rains out here. And then it was, like, a day before we had a self-quarantine. It's, like, when shit was already shutting down and people were panic buying and stuff, It we got hit with, like, a nine-day straight rain forecast. There was, like, yeah. one day break in between there. And it was, like, what is fucking going on here? Anyway, I will say the f- wildlife's probably thriving with people inside and rain all the time. Oh, in yeah, this. the squirrels, those little squeewos out there are probably just, like, getting nuts and, and fucking in the park and having a grand old time without us people. Dude, one time I was on the phone in the parking lot, and one of the squirrels in the in the complex just started following me, uh-huh. and it scared the shit out of me. I was just, like, talking to Tony, and I looked, and it was walking toward me, and I just, like, kind of turned and started walking, and it was, it was following me. Well, what was were just, you like, I've never had a- <laughs> Podcast is over. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. We're done. Bam! We'll see you in the next bonus episode. Take that. It's probably so out of sync. We're done. We're done.